My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 5,679 kilometres so far and I've got 10,921 left to go. So far on the mission, I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits, and in this episode, we meet the Americans. The my foot gets mashed up. Can you run for me? The rain beats me down, and we rescue the most trafficked crocodile in the world. Morning, Russ. What's what's going on? Just put a bit of tea on my foot to hear it because we've run out of blister glasses. Medical marvel, mate. I don't think that's going to hold. It's meant to sit in the dresses. Is that going to stick? I'm just feeling like it's just really not going to, so there's no point. Are you just going to put it on so you feel like you have a boob? I don't know what I'm doing here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. What do you want stretching? Oh yeah, f***ing need to stretch that. We need to write a checklist in like big font, like size 72 and print it out and stick it on your, like just all over the van. You've got to make it appealing so that you get the kids, I mean, that rusty engagement. Kids. <laughs> oh, f***ing hell, I'm tight, man. Excuse me? Oh, mate, my f***ing blister. Mother <laughs> Jesus. Mate, I can see you limping already, that's not a good start. Yeah, it just needs to, I need to get it smashed in a bit. Oh, f this does hurt though, it's one I can't Right, good luck with that bloody thing on your foot. My blister was painful, but I had no choice but to suck it up and get on with it. Last night it had poured with rain, so the temperature was decent and the terrain was flat, so I had nothing to complain about. At the next stop, I found Gus halfway up a drug dealer's ladder. Howdy, partner. Howdy. How's it going? Yeah, okay. Yeah. We're trying to fix, well, Gus is trying to fix the soda. How's that going, mate? Uh, all the connections look good, so I haven't found a problem yet. So maybe we can change some settings and look. If that will do the trick, then we can locate it, maybe. So we met, well, I met this American guy. Uh, he drove past me the other day, and it turns out, I think he's an electrician or something. Yeah, he's an electrician. Yeah. So they're coming by later. We've also got a chat with Shred and Buster lined up, so we'll, I'm sure we'll fix it. Who did you borrow that ladder off? Um, some people crushing up a few kg of marijuana. <laughs> this is going to look like such a puss move, but that is actually giving me a decent amount of grief. Ooh, wow, it looks Fine. like it, man. No, but Fine. it's so raw. It's f***ing raw. Is it affecting your pace at all? Seven minute case. Then, out of nowhere, the American arrived and he was bearing gifts. These are the Americans. So, the battery needs to flip around and flip back in. Y'all have a small screwdriver? Yeah, we have. Okay. How are you doing, man? Hey, fine. Oh, you hero. Look at this. So, this is uh, ones we really enjoy. Sausages, mate. What a time to be alive. A new friend spent a while working on the solar, but he had no luck. The best he could suggest was that our batteries were dying. If so, this was going to be an expensive problem. While I got back on road stomping the moist tarmac, the boys went to the next town to find a place to stay. A friend had told us that he knew an American living nearby who might be able to help us. Yo, how oh, weird. So we're staying with the woman then, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Shem, nice woman. Is she American or what? She's American. She got three kids and pregnant with her fourth daughter. All living here? Yeah. Came to the Congo after studying, she said. She was also a nurse. Met uh, her husband and lived happily ever after. She's been wow. in the Congo for 10 years now, she said. Mm -hmm. She was like, no, I'm cooking for you guys tonight. I'm making spaghetti and rice or something. Oh, that's just like, yeah. What's bothering you? Uh, my first, what's new? Fucking nothing, let's get on road. Oh, fucking hell. Stop it. You're oh, moaning again. Can now, you, can you run for me instead? No. I'm... So you just wear my Garmin, you just put the last 20. Mate, I'm... I've done 42, you've only got to do 18. I'm not very good at it Don't though. be selfish. Uh... Bye. Ooh, <laughs> that's quite the limp. My foot was still killing me, but I had to ignore it. It was a tough day, but I knew I could handle it. So there was no reason to give the pain any thought. The job had to be done. The rain started to give a little tickle, but it was nothing in comparison to what was coming for me. I finished up, excited for spaghetti in a hot shower. Okay, he done. 
Okay, okay, okay. Tough day in the trenches. Wasn't the easiest day in the world, I won't lie. They never really tend to be easy though, do they? Sometimes maybe sh sometimes maybe very sh Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, time to head over to this lady's house. She's gonna feed you spaghetti. Oh mate, I can't wait. Okay. Let's go! So where are we, Russell? What's this town called? Oyo. 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 I like the town that the name of the town. It's and kind of this in Lingala, which yes. I'm not sure why. It's quite boisterous, isn't it, in English? It's like, yeah. oh, yo! Oh, yeah, we've very been kindly been let in. Well, this is where the president of Congo was actually from here. Oh, so yeah, some Thomas. of the nicer buildings that you see and like yeah. the structure kind of is because this is his hometown, so he's invested more money into it. But yeah, Kate has kindly let us into her home and fed us some amazing food. Yeah, food yeah some pasta and bolognese. Good. Bang, bang. So yeah, thank you so much for, for having us. Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, it's the blessing of three mad kids running around the place. Yeah. <laughs> you want to say hello to the camera? Say hello. <laughs> you're going to be in a, a really a cool film. It's amazing. Um, do you ever miss the States? What's that? Oh, yeah, I do. I miss mostly my family mm. and the food. I miss American food. What, what made you want to stay out here then, as opposed to going back to the US? Is it purely um, visas or...? There's a couple different reasons. I guess, well, one is my husband likes living here a lot. And so mm. I think long term he would prefer to be in Congo versus somewhere else. Um, and we, we're Christians. We feel like that God wants us here and we're doing, you know, things to help people. There's things about it that I don't like, but there's also a lot that I do like about it. So I feel like for now, at least this is a good place to be. I don't know. I, don't, I guess when I'm older and the kids are older, I don't know that we will stay here forever. But for now, oh yeah. <laughs> now you found the fun person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we settled into Kate's beautiful home as the sun set, ready to get going early the next morning. 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 Ready to hit it? Yes. Quick one today. You're not wasting no time out nope. here today, boy. Okay. okay. Go running. <laughs> bye bye. It was a bit of a late start, so I was keen to get back on tarmac as quickly as I could. This morning was actually manageable with a decent temperature, no rain, and although my blister was still giving me grief, less pain than yesterday. I motored up the road in good time for the 20k stop. Oh, right, good morning. Morning. Welcome back. Morning, boys and girls. How's your blister doing? Still there. Still there? Still painful? Still uh, still painful. Still painful. Still painful. Wasn't, wasn't really another <laughs> Is there a little cue in there for me, boy? Do you be being a tool? I think that's the last one of I these bottles I've got. Oh my god. You're gonna be alright. Time's out here, you know. It's an especially hot day today. It's already pretty like grim and normally at, at the first stop it's manageable. It's only half time. Cheers. It's truck. <sighs> I wish I was, bro. <laughs> Russ, I was wondering. What was you wondering? Mate? If you have any songs stuck in your head right now. Oh yeah, this one's a classic. Ooh, I actually need this spoon. Fucking tune, man. Fat boy Slim. He's from near you, isn't he? He's a Brighton legend. I gotta praise you like I should. Every day, I just wake up and think, I don't understand how Jared's single. I, <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, it's, it's, it's a real mystery. Right, let's f*** off. Ugh. Come on then. That's about it. Go on. Run on the drop. Very good. Wow! Yeah! <laughs> I'm stuck! What? You okay? It's a bit much, isn't it? There'd been a development during a stop. God had decided to put the whole of Africa in a deep fat fryer and the temperature had hit 238 degrees. I was cooking as I ran down the road, my pale ginger skin crisping up into pork crackling as I went. I couldn't have been happier to see the van at a second stop. Yo, nice and light breezy. What's the temperature saying today? It feels brutal. It got up to 37 earlier. What's the humidity saying? I'm gonna guess about 84%. Yeah, that feels about right. Crazy. <laughs> Pain is a waste of time. Wouldn't you agree? 
Wouldn't wouldn't this whole mission be better if you could feel pain? Nah, pain is good lessons. Oh, I don't feel it anymore. So clearly, yeah, school's out. This is so bad. Jeez. It is a bit mad, isn't it? Jeez. I wish that rain actually caught up, but just it's gone now. It's one of them where it's well sunny, but I'm also just like permanently damp. Right, see you later. Oh, he's going. Oh, yeah, yeah. I set back off into the brutal sun once more. Days like this were really starting to affect my pace, but it wasn't going to get any easier, so I had no choice but to smash on, dragging my sweaty ones and burn twos over the tarmac. But all things come to an end. And as that prick, the sun began to set, I was home and dry. Go on, Dave. That's cool. So much fun. What did you do? Smashed my mind. Yeah. Education's changed. Yeah. What do you think it taught you? Not much. Um, we've got something for you to taste. What is it? We've got a, uh, we've stopped now. Some people came over and offered a smoked catfish to try. Okay. What the f is that? It's like a little catfish. I'm just imagine it bobbing around. I'm going to pull up a piece first so you can see what the inside looks like. This one isn't coming off as easily as the last one. What do you think, mate? I don't think it's bad at all. It's not bad. I'll actually give it a 6 out of 10. It's really not that bad. It looks right. Yeah. Mm. Shout out to the camera. It looks terrible. Oh, there is a worm on that. No. Two. Ah, oh, bruv. <laughs> oh, that's not a vibe. There's quite a few worms in the head. <laughs> Like little white <laughs> worms. Oh, mate. You know I mean? Yeah, you Bro, can see the little one moving. <laughs> As we were setting up camp, the same people that brought us the fish returned laden with food. Mm -hmm. They offered to make us fufu as a show of hospitality, it's a local bad. dish made out of the roots of the cassava tree. They used our cooker and very kindly made the food to share with us. I was pretty sure I was finished with the local food for the day after my maggot filled snack, but this was actually really good. Halfway between a dumpling and a donut. We settled in that night with bellies full of good food and a few parasitic worms. Lovely. Russ Cook. Oh, it's Russ Cook. Causing you some issues, eh? It's got problems. Right, yeah, I have problems. And your calf is one. I feel like we should get like a kind of inspirational quote book of Russ Cook, but it's just like stuff like, ah, oh, be. Oh, right, probably. probably. Walk inside, I'll just rip my blister. Oh, oh no. Oh, me. <laughs> uh, That's not the one at all. Can we get a vote on this hairstyle? Does it look like I've gotten a perm? Jared, I'm going to be really brutally honest with you. It looks exactly the same as it does every day. How much, on a scale of 1 to 10, do you care about Jared's hair? Minus four. Minus four. You're asking our entire YouTube audience, Jared. Anyway, Jared, it's really good that you brought some drama to the video with, ooh, what will happen with your hair? I might put it in the intro. Russ, can we record the intro now? Whoa. In this episode, our van explodes. Jared asks the audience about his marginally different hairstyle. Will he ever get a girlfriend? No. Probably not. <laughs> Saddest geezer spin-off channel. Hardest weezer. Hardest weezer. <laughs> Come on in. Let's go for a jog. Contemplating Jared's love life, I set off on my first 20k. Today was the day I'd meet true greatness, but I didn't know it yet. As I powered through, the jungle opened up into a vast swampland and beautiful meadows. However, these did cause a few logistical issues. Tried to go for a sh** earlier, fell in a bog. Did ya? Mission aborted. What? Like arse, arse in bog or bear? Nah, or nah, look, I was just trying to make my way down to find a spot. What, so, so it could have been weird. Damage. Shoot, just foot just, just, in just, bog. Just in bog. Yeah, it's not a terrible scene. I actually reckon this journey would be, I'd say at least 70% harder without caffeine. Do you think? Yeah. I, actually, I don't actually reckon you'd be able to do your job about it. Oh, no, I actually categorically don't think I would be able to. <laughs> All of my energy is fake. It's not real. It's a boo gazy, mate. What can you do? You are a drug addict. I literally am. So am I. At least you're a healthy drug addict, though. Yeah, I'd rather be a matcha, drag matcha addict. I'm trying to ration myself to two a day because I've not got many left. We're one day away from the equator now. We'll hit the equator tomorrow, I think. Really? Yeah. Violently. Yeah. Jesus, I know. Fuck. I know. <laughs> 154 days to hit the equator. Fucking hell. So that means we are a third of the way through now in five months. 
Russ, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I can't do 15 months out here, boy. Neither can I. I wouldn't enjoy it. No. Really wouldn't enjoy it. I wouldn't say you're massively enjoying it currently either, to be honest. Not, not, mate. There's good days. No, there's not even good days. Sometimes there's good moments <laughs> in a day. <laughs> mostly but, painful. I've got to say, though, I don't think most of those good moments involve running, do they? Nah. <laughs> I'm kind of over this running thing, man. Bad time to make that realisation. <laughs> <laughs> oh f <laughs> mate, it's when you get onto a big straight road and you just look at it and you're like, f <laughs> f off. But you are gonna have one strawberry daiquiri in about five to ten months time. It'll be, we'll, we'll, yeah, make it work. Really yeah, we'll make it worth it. Right, Russ, you know that eleven thousand kilometers we were on about? Yeah. Time to do twenty of them. Bye. See you later. I powered on with what I thought would be a normal leg. But about 5k, I spotted someone that would change my life forever. A man by the side of the road had a baby crocodile on a string. I knew what I had to do. I just bought a pet crocodile. And what are we going to do with it? Why called, have we what should we call him? Nigel. Nigel why, why have we bought him? We're not going to keep him, are we? We, we bought him because he's ferocious, just like me. Yeah. And it just spoke to me. And, and? He said, and he said, Russ. Me and you, let's ride this out together, bro. I said, all right, big nice, you're in. He's beautiful. Hello. He's beautiful. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna set him free because these animals that uh, kept sold as pets normally die really, really quickly. Yeah, but, yeah, but let's save confident. the crocodiles. Yeah, big nice. We want to find like a proper place for him to stay, like nice river and a nice jungle. We will free it up. As much as Nigel was a ferocious animal that I respected with all my being, there was an important reason why we bought him. Big Nige was actually secretly Little Nige, a West African dwarf crocodile. These are often captured and sold as pets, subjecting them to very short, cruel lives. It's hard to judge these people who simply needed to make money, but we couldn't sit back and let Big Nige suffer. So our plan was to take him with us, nurse him back to health, and then let him free in a safe, secluded river to let him live out his days in the splendor a king like him deserves. How do you feel about having Nige, man? Finally got Nige, man. Goats were boring anyway, I wanted to fuck all along. He's a gangster, he's a hustler. I looked into his eyes earlier, he didn't give a fuck, man. I'm learning, I'm learning from him. Let's go and, let's go and learn some things off Nige. Okay. Hi, Nige. You okay, buddy? You'll be in a river soon, don't worry. Look at this man, he doesn't give a bollocks. Anyone gets near him, it's games. Hashtag be more, Nige. Look at them eyes, mate. He's got eyes on all of us right now. Mate, inspiration. What's the number one lesson? Be more gangster. <laughs> in a while, crocodile. <laughs> Big Nige's wisdom was ringing in my ears as I hit the road again. He wouldn't give a shit if his foot was hurting, so neither could I. He would be chilling in 38 degree heat, so so should I. He'd come in a form none of us expected, but having Big Nige on the team was a game changer for the future of the mission and powered me through the rest of the day. That night we stayed in a hotel, expecting the luxury Big Nige deserved, but rainy season reared its ugly head once again, sending a violent storm that cut the power and sent a clear warning about the future of the mission. So, I think that's it. Rainy season's caught up to us. Uh, yeah, that is rain. <laughs> yeah. The sky's just lighting up. With everything else that we've had problems we need to worry about, this is the new thing. Yeah, I mean, if we, if there's anything other than tarmac roads ahead of us, we're in trouble. Yeah. I wonder what. Let's see. Last night was a rough one. Yeah, there's a whole, whole big ass fun storm, wasn't it? Mm. No power, the air con off. Mozzies galore. A lot of mozzies. We hope it's all, all tar roads today and no dirt roads otherwise we are going swimming We're probably going to say goodbye to big nige depends what we see if we see a good place for him we obviously don't want to let him go in the massive river because he will that get river, yeah basically what do you think nige's theme song would be um, gangster's paradise gangster's paradise do you have any advice for someone who wants to start running my advice would be get your head out the door that is the number one most important thing. Just focus on yourself because it's really easy to compare like whatever you're trying to do to, you know, someone running a two hour marathon or whatever. Everyone 
has to start somewhere. And as long as you know you are trying to make improvements on yourself, that's the only that's the, the, the most important thing. Maybe today your goal is to walk around the block for 1k, and then maybe tomorrow your goal can be to walk around the block for 1k but run 100 meters of it. It's pretty incredible how quickly you will notice improvements. Well, we'll see you in about two hours. The rain had cleared and I was excited about the next few hours on road. Today we would release Big Nige into his new stomping grounds, unleashing a reign of terror on the local small fish community. It would be chaos and I couldn't wait, which drove me through the first 20k. He's here. It's the crocodile man. I am. Is he still in there, is he? Yeah. Go on, Nige. The other side. Oh, look at him go, he's just, mate, he's ferocious, mate. Who knew he was such a good climber? He's gross. Yeah, he's his own man, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you do you see him as your big brother or your little brother? Just like twins. <laughs> Who are your parents? You're asking too many questions again, Sam. Is she, uh, I wake up, I violently kill Tarmac. Big Nige wakes up, he violently kills whatever's lurking in that pond. Frogs. All the frogs, all the frogs get it. All this tarmac gets it. I don't know. I think Nige is a bit harder, a bit harder than you. I feel like Nige doesn't get grumpy when he hasn't had biscuits. Yeah, he does. <laughs> does he? <laughs> Brother's going for a run, Nige. How do you feel about that? Do you, yeah. Do you want to come join? How are you feeling about saying goodbye to Nige today? It's a bit of a sweet moment, but I wish Nige good. Huge, solid team. Well, there's a storm coming. If that makes you feel any better. I just heard a rumble of thunder in that general direction. Stan wasn't wrong, there was a storm coming and just like your dad, it came fast. Within minutes, I was in the middle of a heavy thunderstorm which tore up the jungle and pounded water over me. But surprisingly, I quite enjoyed it. Weeks of brutal heat had taken their toll and just to be cool was a privilege. Plus it saved me a shower. How are you sir? Yeah alright. It's only a little bit wet out there isn't it? A little bit. Oh we've still got Nige eh? Yeah. yeah. We're going to find a spot for the sea ring. There's a towel there for you. There's one under you as well. Sick. Yeah. Don't have to have any point. So Nigel and I are going to do an interview today. Nigel, you got any questions for us? Why, well, Russ? I was just wondering why you decided to run the entire lake of Africa. That's an he interesting question. He gets it. I know. It was more of a hypothetical because I understand that we're both ferocious animals. Man, crocodiles are f***ing cool. Yeah, he has been eyeing up my fleshy parts quite a bit lately. Mm. So yeah, rainy season, uh, I think it's fair to say that it's here. I reckon maybe. How is that? <laughs> I'm pretty wet. Yes. Your drip is immaculate, Russ. Look at it. Bro, Mother Nature, see, she said to me, let's throw some 38 degree days at him. Handled. Now what you got? She went, here's a fat f off thunderstorm. Is that the best you've got? Now I'm about to go and get struck by lightning. The main, I mean, the main concern about rainy season, we were due to miss it, and then obviously we got robbed, and then lost, and then nearly kidnapped, and then our van broke down, and then smashed into the back of a truck. So we're a little late other than planned, but obviously rainy season is a big issue for roads. My main worry is crossing into Nigeria, which is during dry season, a challenging drive for a <laughs> motorbike. So even with four by four, Straight go go gangster. He really is. Though. He's just got teeth dog. and just like fucking scales. Look at him. He's got them weird eyes in the side of his head where he's kind of always staring at you like, yeah, I might fuck you up. What are you going to do about it? Oh, no, 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 no. The, 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 what do you reckon Nigel's advice to me would be right now? These ones there, you get them with. Well, right, right. Um, I don't know about your croc voice. It sounds a bit pedo y. Do you think? I'm not pedo, I'm Nigel, I'm crocodile. <laughs> I reckon his, his advice would be like, why are you doing so much running? You'll go into the tarmac to stomp it, why don't you let the tarmac come to you like I do? It's not known for much movement, tarmac. No, but neither's nice to be fair. It's man a few words. You excited to get back out in that rain, lad? Oh, Fucking thrilled about it. Bye bye, Russ. Enjoy. I felt a little bit sad as I ran my final leg of the day. The time to say goodbye to Big Nige was fast approaching. I was going to miss my scaly twin, the only one who truly got me, truly understood my ferocity. But he was his own man and he needed to move on. Who was I to say no? As I reached 60k, we found a small, 
safe river to let him free. It's time, like Nigel. Prepared a speech or something, Nigel. You are a ferocious dinosaur-looking creature. You came into our lives what only a short time ago, but feels like a lifetime. We will sorely miss you. The ferociousness you bring to the team um, taught us all many lessons, and we will see you in another life uh, after you've gone and made lots of crocodile babies because you're a good looking young chap and uh, happy fishing out there, boy. <laughs> How's that? Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, man. Right, let's get, <laughs> let's get him out of here. Big moment for a little crocodile. Get this rope off here, you poor thing. There we go. Imagine having one of the, a bit of string round your your balls and that all day. Oh, like that wouldn't be very comfy, would it? Right, young Nige. Should we just like salute, with Nige? Just a quick one. Quick salute. Quick salute. Just a quick salute. Just... He is a uh, West African dwarf um, crocodile. He is the most. Shout out poached. to all of our dwarf audience, Harry Harry Gallimore, <laughs> especially. <laughs> Most poached species of crocodile um, because of how easy they are to pick up, apparently. Yeah, that makes sense. They grow to about 1.5 meters. Most trafficked as well. So yeah, let's hope he lives a good life and doesn't get trafficked. There we go. Maybe he doesn't like it. Maybe he just wants to stay with us in the coolest van in the world. Yeah, I did say he wanted to come for the journey, boys. Mm, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> Shall I see if he's interested oh, no, in the f off now, mate? <laughs> Come on, mate. Go on, Nige. It's a fucking hard vibe down oh, here, mate. Boy. There we go. Yes, boy. Off he goes. Yeah, he's going for a little wander. Go on for it. Sweet. Animal rescue done for the day. Yeah, I think. Right, should we bounce? Swim. Let's get back. Let's do it. In the next episode. Stand shit sideways, I run the longest day of the mission and cross the equator. Do you want to read it in a not stupid voice? Uh, I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to do an X Factor style voice at the okay. moment. What do you reckon?